Good afternoon and welcome to our worship service. Please join with me in the call to worship. God calls each of us to serve. We answer, here I am. Jesus calls each of us to follow. We answer, here I am. The Holy Spirit calls each of us to worship this day. We answer, here I am. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. O oh God, you call us today, just as you called the boy Samuel so long ago. Gathered together yet apart, we know you speak to us regardless of situation and that you are here with us. Allow us in this time of worship to hear your call and respond to your word. Open our ears and our hearts as we worship, as we live in community, and as we care for one another through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We have failed to love you and trust in your will and have instead hidden in the light you ask us to carry into the world. Draw us back with your forgiving love and embolden us for your kingdom so that we may reflect your love to others through Jesus Christ. Amen. In faithfulness, God lifts us up, sets our feet on solid ground, and reassures us of his love. Believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are set free and forgiven in grace. And now let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Open our ears, O God that we might hear your words speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through Scripture. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might understand your promises to followers both old and young, ancient and modern. And open our hearts, O oh God, that we may enter into the love you offer us in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Samuel. In the third chapter, the story of Samuel's call and prophetic activity. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that has been spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by the sacrifice of offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning and he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli came and called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from you. May God do so to you, and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, and he hid nothing. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew up. The Lord was with him, and let none of the words he spoke fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Our Gospel reading is from John. In the first chapter, Jesus' call of Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, He is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, 
Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord for us. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Hearing this asks the question, which days? Those of Samuel's time or those of our time? There is no doubt that we live in challenging, unprecedented, historic times. Times when we struggle to hear God's voice and even our own. And with the events these past few weeks, it seems even more rare to hear the word of the Lord and to know God is speaking to us. Our passages this morning are call passages, ones where people clearly hear the Lord speaking, Jesus to the disciples and God to Samuel. However, they are also passages where God seems distant and not fully understand. And this strange dichotomy of a God who seems far away and yet is still speaking eerily fits the times we live in. The book of Samuel is fascinating. It was one book that was divided into two. And 1 Samuel, where our reading is from, takes place over the course of a little more than about a hundred years. It starts at the end of the time of the judges when military-like leaders ruled over Israel and when Samuel was born. And the book ends with the death of the first king of Israel, Saul, about a hundred years later. The content in between is fascinating. Stories of the rise and the fall of King Saul, the anointing of a new king, a young man named David, all leading to vast changes in political structures and direction for the course of Israel. Stories of Samuel and his birth and his call from God and his prophecies and ministries are in the book also. This is a crucial time in Israel's history. They came into the promised land and settled among the people there. There were conflicts and disturbances to the peace and their lives that I am sure challenged them beyond imagination and it made them question where God was leading them. How these people, Samuel and Saul and David, responded to God's clear call clearly affected what happened to the entire people of Israel. God had been sovereign in all times, whether they are ancient times, the times we read about Samuel and his colleagues, or in our 21st century context. What is important, which we learn from Samuel, is our response. Samuel, in our passage, is initially confused by what he hears, questioned it, and had to have someone else clarify for him what has got going on. He looks to Eli, who if you just read this passage seems like a good mentor, but Eli was corrupt. We find out later about his judgment and what happens to him and his family. His sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord just like their father, but they were corrupt and would eat the meat that was sacrificed to God. Eli tries to stop them, but could not, and they ignored him, and because of this, God takes Eli and his sons. Eli could have stopped them, but did not, and God could not tolerate the abuse of his temple and the abuse of power any longer. God stands with the oppressed and the abused and the destitute and stands against those who corrupt his temple and power. God calls instead prophets like Samuel to speak against this and to spread his message. In our times, God also calls people with prophetic wisdom to speak against abuse and corruption. We have modern examples in people like Martin Luther King Jr. or Mother Teresa. This call narrative speaks in the context of this book to set the stage for what is going to happen with Saul and with David and it speaks now again in our times against the corruption of our world and the time that we live in to remind us 
that God is sovereign, that God does work in our lives and does work in our times to bring about justice and God's will. As God worked in Samuel's life to create amazing things like the anointing of a king that eventually led to Jesus, God took the challenges of those times to bring about prosperity and to bring about justice. So God also promises that, but it comes with requirements. Samuel didn't just overnight see the United Kingdom of David. As a matter of fact, he never did see it. It was a future hope and a promise in his time. So God overnight will not bring about the end to our pandemic, will not soothe our political or economic despair and bring about justice to the oppressed. It will require hard work from us. It will require us, as it did Samuel, to take our calling from God seriously, to follow and to trust in God, even if it doesn't always make sense and isn't easy. We know that most leaders set out to do great things, noble and life-changing things, but too often many end up failing. And it's sad and makes us wonder what's next, what the future holds, and how we will make things right, a place that many of us are in today. It happened to the ancient Israelites in Samuel. It happened to Eli. They were told that they were David's descendants and that God would spread their rule to the end of the earth. But ultimately, the house of David fell, and the people were left bewildered and wondering what the future held and where God was. A feeling many of us in our times have, wondering what has happened to our nation, to our democracy, wondering what the future holds, wondering how we are going to continue to deal with an ongoing pandemic, wondering what happens to us as a people and individually, wondering just where is God and if God is sovereign and how we can hear God speaking. The story of Samuel reminds us that there are great blessings in store for us as individuals and as God's people. It reminds us that God is with us, reaffirming our need to listen for God's voice and to answer when we hear God speaking, saying, Here I am. Amen.
Please keep the concerns of our communities, our nation, and our world in your prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank you for the relationship that you made possible through Jesus Christ. In him you called us and drew near to us that we might draw near to you. You gave us faith in the midst of doubt. And when we think of how you sent Jesus, we marvel at your grace. By your power you called us to serve your holy purpose, and every moment your steadfast love beckons us. We praise you for showing us your mystery that we may better know ourselves and you. As we listen to the news of our nation and world, O oh Lord, as we continue to see the challenges around us, our hearts are heavy. So many suffer. We remember especially the struggles related to the ongoing pandemic and pray for all involved. We see hope in the promise of the vaccine and yet still see so much suffering and loss. We pray for the nations of the world and we pray especially for our own nation, especially this week as we look to the inauguration. May it be a time of peace and a time of unity again as we live into your call and into your promises. We pray for our troops stationed here and around the world. Keep them safe and remind them of your presence. And we thank you for all those with peace in their hearts and all those who fight for peace and ask that this peace would be a peace that comes from you so that we may know only the peace that you offer that heals deep divisions in our world, in our nations, and in our own hearts. We know, O oh God, there are many much closer to us who suffer and have trouble finding your love. We pray for those we know who struggle with illness of the body, the mind, the spirit, or situation, for those who life seems an upend upending battle. We remember especially those known to us whom we name in the silence of our hearts. We lift up our community this day, O oh God, asking that you would continue to bring healing to all in need, that you would bring protection, and that you would remind us of your call to live as a community. Allow us to hear your call in our lives and teach us to go beyond doubt and to love one another so that we may be transformed into the body of Christ and discover the good news of Jesus in whose name we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.